everybody, it's Natalina here in my teaching kitchen and I want to show you uh, my favorite rhubarb recipe. My husband brought in some lovely stalks of rhubarb this morning and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make rhubarb squares. And it's a favorite here in my household um, in the springtime when the rhubarb is abundant. It does use quite a bit of rhubarb though, so if you have a small plant you might have to wait until you have enough. You need at least six cups. Um, but if you don't have six cups of rhubarb, what I've often done when my plant is smaller is I fill in with whatever else I had. <coughs> Excuse me, so that might be strawberries, blueberries, um, raspberries, even apple. At a minimum, if I don't have any berries, I would just chop up some apple and make up the difference so I have six cups of fruit. Um, so you could even add a little bit more than six cups if you have it. You would just have to change the sugar. In, in terms of sweetness. And same with you, if you're adding a lot of other fruit, you might have to adapt the sugar, okay? So if you're going with straight six cups of rhubarb, when we add the sugar, you're gonna add a full cup of sugar. Um, if you're throwing in other fruit in there that's um, sweeter than rhubarb, then you might wanna add less sugar, okay? I actually ended up with a little bit more than six cups here, just because when I cut it all up, I had more, it was closer to seven cups but I'm still gonna add one cup of, of sugar because I like it a little bit tartar, okay? So this is, if you think of um, date squares, it's like date squares, but with rhubarb instead. Okay, this is adapted from a recipe that actually my mother-in-law gave me, and so I've just switched it up a little bit, but that's where it originated from, and we just love it. So you're gonna wash your stalks, chop up your rhubarb, okay? So I had seven cups, so you may have less than that, at least six cups of fruit, you're going to chop it up into one, eight, one inch cubes and to that you're going to add one quarter cup of water and you're just going to let it simmer on low till it starts to fall apart. So you can leave it as chunky as you like or you can have it totally um, cooked down so there's no chunks at all. I like chunks so I've got little chunks in here. Okay so now that that's done I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to add to that my one cup of sugar, that's just white sugar. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest because that'll brighten up the flavor. So um, say about say about a couple of tablespoons worth. So that's gonna be almost the whole entire lemon. So I'm rubbing it on the grater and turning it so I don't get any pith. And that'll just brighten up the rhubarb flavor. I love to use lemon zest. So this is a fine grater, by the way. You could do it, of course, in a bowl or on a paper towel and then measure it, but I'm just going to do it right in there. So there's probably a little bit stuck on the back as usual. There it is. Okay, that's going in. We're going to mix that in. We're going to let the sugar dissolve, which won't take long because the, um, the rhubarb is still really hot. You can see the steam coming off of it. Okay, I know it smells amazing. Okay, and then to that now we're going to add one third cup cornstarch. Okay, and I like to sift it a little bit just because I find it's got lumps. So we're going to do that and stir it up and that'll help thicken it a little bit. There we go. I'm going to show you so we're going to stir that up and now I'm going to turn the heat back on just to let it kind of melt. That will not take long at all. burner was already hot so once the white is all gone and then you'll see that the cornstarch will start to run clear after a couple minutes just on low heat okay so while we're waiting for that in my bowl here, I've got all my dry ingredients for the crust. So this is two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, two cups of rolled oats. Those could be quick cooking oats. They could be uh, flakes, um, you a whole bunch of varieties there. Um, I probably wouldn't use steel cut though, because they won't, they'll be too hard still, okay? Um, and then to that, you're going to add one cup of brown sugar, and um, three quarters cup of melted butter. So let's dry, or rather mix up our dry ingredients first. We'll give this a stir. 
Okay, and it looks like the sugar's melted, the cornstarch is melted, so I'm turning that off. Okay, I'm mixing my dry. So just quickly, this is super easy. And we love it. It's a great way to use up rhubarb. I like to freeze my rhubarb too, so I'll, I'll wash it, cube it up, let it dry, and then toss it in freezer bags. And what I'll do is I'll pre-measure it for this recipe, and I'll put a little note on the bag. So then I can, in a pinch, make this, because the rhubarb is already washed and cut. I will not thaw the rhubarb, though. I'll just throw it in frozen. And you may not need any water at all to get it to cook down. You might only need a little, little tiny bit of water because of the ice crystals in it. Okay, so this is all thoroughly mixed. To that, I'm going to add my three cups of melted butter. I prefer unsalted butter in my baking. Actually, I, I use unsalted butter for everything. I prefer to watch the salt on my own. So, okay, so you're going to mix this up just until there's no more um, liquid butter, there's no more dried flour, and it's all kind of incorporated. It is going to be fairly dry, though. My oven beeped. I'm preheating that to 350 degrees. And this is ready to go. Okay, and now I've got a 9 by 13 glass baking pan here. It doesn't have to be glass. It can be whatever you like. So anything around the same size will work. And what you're going to do is you're going to put about two-thirds of this mixture in here. You're going to hold back a third because that's going to be our topping. Okay, so the two-thirds is going to go down. And I'm just going to pat that in. And it's still quite dry, as you can see, which is perfectly fine. You can even up the butter if you want. I actually, when I originally adapted this recipe, um, it originally called for a whole cup of butter, and I cut it back to three quarters because I found three quarters was enough. And then I also cut back a little bit on the sugar because I found it a little bit sweet, so you can increase the sugar in the fruit if you want, and you can increase the butter if you want like a full decadent square, but I find it still delicious, and just cutting back a little bit on the fat and sugar with these rest with these ingredients that I gave you. Okay, so now here we go. This is still warm and we're gonna throw it in here. And I actually said that this was gonna become clear. It doesn't, sorry, it doesn't become clear until it bakes in the oven. So when you're cooking it down, my apologies, it should just be, the sugar should be dissolved, the cornstarch should be dissolved. But when you bake it, it will become clear. You can see it's still kind of cloudy, and that's exactly what it should be. So just spread it all over, just like that. Then I've got my final third. I'm just going to sprinkle this on top. This is gonna go in the oven until it's brown. And you'll see the filling will start to bubble. Let me just check my notes here. Can't remember how long that is off the top of my head. It is, do I have a time on that? Actually, I don't. So it's at least 30 minutes, possibly 40 minutes. I've had this recipe forever. I make it every spring. It's kind of funny too, because when I first started making it, none of my kids liked it. They never tasted it. They said, oh no, we don't like rhubarb. So my husband and I would happily eat it. I'd actually freeze half of it. It freezes really well, by the way. And actually this looks, you can even make the filling ahead and just freeze the filling or you can complete the entire um, recipe and then freeze it after it's baked. But anyways, yeah, my kids said they didn't like rhubarb. And then one of them one day tried it and said, hmm, this is pretty good. And so we swore him to secrecy and said, don't tell the others because then there's more for us. So for a few years, it was just my husband and I and my son, Michael, that enjoyed this. And then one day 
they all kind of got in on it and now I can never make enough of it. So anyway, so easy peasy. Um, I'll have the ingredients in the bottom of the video. Um, please join us back for more videos. We'll try and do some seasonal things. Um, we're in the midst of our canning program right now. So I've got lots of canning jars and canning pots around. Um, we're running those remote classes through our Facebook page. So please check out our Facebook page at Natalina's Kitchen. Check out my online school at natalinaskitchen.com because we've got all the classics up there. You can buy one uh, menu or you can buy the complete classic Italian program. Um, and then of course, Instagram and Twitter, Natalina's Kitchen, all those things. Anyways, we'll see you soon. Uh, take care and have a wonderful summer. Enjoy this. I'll have a picture on the Facebook page of the finished one. Ciao.